Art is in the eye of the beholder. I'm sure you've heard this quote at least some point in your life, and it was probably in a moment where you believed the art in question was absolute dog shit. The meaning behind the phrase is inarguably true. Whether you agree or not, someone's positive reception over any piece of art is entirely their own choice. Even if they look back on themselves eight years from now and think, wow, I cannot believe I thought that crap was cool. Perception of art is inarguable. Judgment, on the other hand, is also entirely your own choice. If we all had to come together and agree on something, it would be that there's nothing more ironic than buying a spray-painted canvas with the word fool on it for $8 million. What if I told you there is a piece of art that took 9 years to create and you can buy it for $60? I am specifically talking about Cyberpunk 2077. Cyberpunk was officially announced 9 years ago. I was 11 years old. The first John Wick movie hasn't even come out yet. You're breathtaking! When the game finally released on last gen consoles, next gen, and PC, it was a buggy, unfinished mess. It was incredibly disappointing, especially for the last gen consoles which looked and played worse than a $4 game on the recently published section of Steam. It was quite literally unplayable, but from my day one experience I dumped like 60 hours into it. I mean, I was on PC, of course, so I can't speak for the hellish experience that was given to console players, but I don't know, just like cry about it or something, I guess. All right, might as well get to the video now. I just had the urge to write a lot in like a video essay style after YouTube was relentlessly trying to get me to watch this four hour long video about H3H3 H3 and Trisha Paytas' failed podcast. YouTube, I literally don't care. Please stop recommending me this fucking video. I will never watch it. Anyway, I replayed Cyberpunk 2077. I heard it's good now or something. That's the video. But guys, can we please hit over 10 likes on this video? I know it's ambitious, but I know you guys can do it. Come on, the letter community is so strong. I believe we can hit that goal. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and ring that bell. I'm surprised if you made it this far into the video, but I appreciate your dedication because I would have not blamed you if you had clicked off the video after going through the worst 30 seconds of your life. It took me three weeks to edit that one segment, so I hope it was worth it. I am honestly not even sure how to move on after that, but I can certainly try. So the game starts with you being told you need to steal a car because our friend can't pay off a debt to some guy with some stupid ass ears. And quick spoilers, I never see either of these two people again for the entire rest of the playthrough. I got peer pressured to get into a car by a guy V apparently has history with, but first I had to check if V got hops and she kinda knew who was gonna drive me to the spot I needed to steal the car from but we got politely asked to pull over by some law-abiding citizens they were wondering if the gang boss I was forced to sit next to could please stop harassing their neighbors to which the gang boss replied by threatening to kill his mother not cool then he said some real petty shit about how being in a different city changed me because I didn't immediately stand up for him even though the situation had literally nothing to do with me and he's supposed to be the leader of a gang. What the fuck you mean Atlanta broke me? That had nothing to do with me you sack of shit! This, is, this was business between you and that asshole! This had absolutely nothing to do with me! You're gonna be like, Why did you say anything? Motherfucker, you're the, you're the gang boss! Why the fuck should I have to talk for you? Either way, I got the car. Easy peasy. And then this douchebag with absolutely no plan or thought process behind how he'd get away with stealing a car like this puts a gun in my face, blows my cover since he had no idea how to get in undetected, and then I got the shit kicked out of me and lost the car because of it. Shit! He made a really accurate observation which would have been nice for him to do before trying to steal a million dollar car without a plan. But the game forces you to like this guy, despite the fact every involvement of his character leads to a disaster and you will never have the option to tell him to eat shit. Where, where's the option to say, yeah, you're right? Where was the option to be like, yes, I would have had a really cool car by now? Despite this happening, he asks if we should go to lunch. Which V very reasonably says, you put a fucking gun to my face like a few minutes ago. So he says something that doesn't at all make up for the fact that he almost got us both killed and insists we should be friends instead. I don't give a fuck what- I don't care if I'm good in your books, you had no plan other than to just walk up to the car and try and take it. And I would have had a sick ass car, you sh you almost shot me and you got us both arrested and beat up, fuck you. I oh yeah, food it is, yep we're going! All right, let's have lunch. What the fuck? 
We have a little friendship montage with Jackie. I have no idea why my character looks the way she does. I didn't auto-generate her or anything, so I don't know what happened. Not to say there's anything wrong with looking like this. I'm just trying to say that given a choice, I would have made her look different. Which also doesn't really make sense, considering I literally was given the choice. Listen, I might have been streaming during a manic episode, which, thinking more clearly now, I'd probably want to look something more like this. And I think most people would agree. We saved a lady with really good health insurance or something. I don't know. This is how you know this game takes place in America, because only someone with a lot of money can get this good immediate treatment. I need that. I need 70 milligrams dopamine. Where's my trauma team? Come back. Jackie fucked up my car. Jackie, you motherfucker. Scratched your baby up pretty bad. Sorry, V. Do you do anything okay. right? Which was great because we got stopped at a bridge during a lockdown and the officer paid absolutely no attention to our car riddled with bullet holes and a destroyed windshield. Windshield a bit cracked? Yeah, they don't know. They, she didn't pay any attention to it. That's how, that's how she got sweet talked by this fucking thing. This looks like a comfy ass bed. Wait, V, what have you been reading? The hottest sex workout. I beat down a poor robot program to get its ass whooped. And thus begun what will become my playstyle for the majority of this playthrough. Get up! Spoilers for the future. Jackie, once again proving his usefulness, got us a job with this guy he is basically creaming over. And meeting him eventually results in V's life literally getting destroyed. I just think that's really cool and awesome. V, yo, listen up. She was talking. She was talking. Your girlfriend was literally in the middle of speaking, Jackie. We are so far into the future. Any body implants you can imagine are possible. Entire facial reconstruction is totally seamless and nobody would be any the wiser. And this guy, rich out of his mind, has the worst hairline I have ever fucking seen. I don't want to hear any excuses like maybe he's just a smart spender. He has a gold arm and his car doors open backwards. Save your breath. He wants us to steal a military drone for a bigger heist. And for any other person, going into this place would be like walking into your own death. But V is built different and within the first 10 seconds of being there, she rips the gun off a turret and uses it to kill literally everyone inside. I had to drop it though when I climbed a ladder because even though she can rip it off a turret and cause it to fucking explode, she can't carry it up a ladder. So I had to resort to a katana, which which didn't even feel like a katana because I'm playing on the hardest difficulty. I made it to the boss where I learned that the early game melee strategy actually involves just throwing every grenade you have at them until they are either blind forever or dead. Also this tiny knife was better than the katana so that's cool, plus one for style points I guess. At this point the story lost me because I have really bad retention of anything so I just stared at her blankly as she talked about stealing something. Here we met Judy who is really good with technology and gives us a VR headset with a corny ass name. But we also learned that Lizzie's bar used to be called Lizzie Jizzy. She gave us a POV of what it's like to be the average Chicago resident. I don't know why because this is literally just an average Tuesday. After this, the stream actually died. And then I proceeded to stream over 52 hours of Cyberpunk over the span of three days, which was when I actually started to get into the groove of things. But this was immediately followed by one of the hardest two weeks I've ever had to deal with, which is why this video has taken longer than expected to make. So, uh, sorry about that, but I digress. I strayed away from the main story a bit to discover that leveling in the right areas of this game is actually really important. Is that a boss? Because some areas are definitely way harder than others, which, yeah, makes sense, but this game is so fucking big. I don't know where to go. I'm gonna keep it real with you, Chief. I ain't reading all that. Holy fuck, it's a zombie! I found my first cyber psycho, which are basically for the most part just like homeless dudes with mental illness. And he killed me once, so I met a game the shit out of him until I got the chance to beat him down. Fuck you, Ellis Carter. This is what most of the playthrough will look like since I decided to go with mainly just fists. <laughs> just beating the shit out of him. Going back to the main story, since I assumed it's gonna be the quickest way to level, I'm Yo. saving this sound bite for later. After life, here we come, baby. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> just an obnoxious character and every interaction I have with him has to be positive and I'm like yeah let's go Jackie hey everyone's gotta go sometime right why not in style what was that oh and by the way name's Jackie Wells you want to write down my recipe shot of vodka on the rocks lime juice ginger beer oh and most importantly a splash of love 
<laughs> if someone said this at a bar, they'd have a glass thrown at their head. <laughs> I don't. Every interaction I've had with Jackie has just been terrible. So we're planning to use the drone that we got from that one building to break into a tower that's owned by the largest corporation on the planet, and we're supposed to steal some incredibly rare piece of history called the relic that's kept in a vault in the room of one of the most important people on the planet. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything. I literally don't care. I'm not gonna talk to Jackie at all. This is the most important day of my fucking life. That's awesome, Jackie. Yeah, by the way, I slandered Jackie this entire series. I am actively preying on his downfall. Ever since he's shown up, he's only gotten us into bad situations. No, he can handle this himself. T-Bug, I'm sorry, I blinded. What the hell, B? I said stall. Do I gotta do everything? Sorry, I just... <laughs> I'm very adamant I'm not talking to him at all because I hate him and I'm a hater and I am full of hatred. There's so many times when I have the chance to talk to him and I just look him dead in the eyes and say nothing. If someone did this to me, the anxiety would cause no. my brain to fall apart. The idea of trying to talk to one of your friends and no matter what you say, they are just dead silent staring at you is like a nightmare. So we made it to Yorinobu's penthouse, son of the head of Arasaka. Like the royal family or some shit, I think, I don't know, I know more about this fictional family than the royal one. So we steal the relic and disaster struck. Uh oh, Yorinobu randomly decided to show up again. And uh oh, even worse, his 100 something year old dad shows up too, the most powerful man in the world. And they get into an argument because his son is angsty and his dad doesn't understand him or what he's going through. And his dad freaking dies bro, he done killed him with his own bare hands. This is not good, because now we gotta escape fast, and we couldn't make it to our only chance of getting out, because we got spotted, and we fell down pretty hard, now the relic is dying, and I'm okay, but the Jackie is dying, but more importantly, the relic is dying, so Jackie had to put the thing in his head, and I don't know, I guess it didn't do nothing to him, so that's good. Now we gotta go through this slog of stealth, and it took forever, but here I started getting used to my hacking abilities, and it makes me feel kind of cool using it, I won't lie, it's a pretty neat feature, especially later in the game. I also got good at doing the breach protocols, because they give me money for some reason, and when when I do them quickly, I look smart, even though it's incredibly easy. But we eventually escaped, and it looks like Jackie is not doing too hot. Epic rap battles of history, Jackie Wells versus a 300 mile long meteor from outer space. Begin! After life, 